Hello and welcome. Today is going to be a really short video where we take a look at humanism. And if you remember from the psychological perspectives, humanism looks at free will and the power that we have to behave and act in any way that we'd like. And that is what humanists believe when it comes to personality. But each humanist psychologist has their own opinion about what drives our behavior, what motivates our behavior for us to act the way that we do. And so let's start by looking at Abraham Maslow and his hierarchy of needs. Abraham Maslow believes that what motivates a person's behavior is fulfilling the hierarchy of needs. That first we need to have our most basic needs met, our physiological needs and our safety needs, before we can have our psychological needs met of belongingness and esteem. Eventually, we will reach self-actualization, and that is the goal and what drives our behavior to ultimately achieve self-actualization. And what self-actualization is, it's the process of fulfilling our potential. So the way Maslow came up with this hierarchy and this idea of self-actualization is he studied people who were healthy, creative individuals, those that had the ability to be self-aware, self-accepting, spontaneous, loving, caring individuals who had a mission in life, who were looking to, to make changes in society. And what he did when studying those individuals was have them describe what he called peak experiences. These moments in our life when we are filled with joy, excitement, wonder, and he said those were signs that we have reached self-actualization. That when we have these moments of transcendence, that self-actualized individuals have these more often than the rest of the general population. And so by having people report on these peak experiences, helped them to understand what self-actualization looked like and use this as the foundation of what drives our behavior. Carl Rogers, on the other hand, described our self-actualization a little bit differently. He also believed, though, that we have self-actualizing tendencies. But instead of going through this hierarchy, he believed that we just needed the right environment in order to achieve this self-actualization. And what we need from our environment is genuineness, empathy, and acceptance. And acceptance is a really big portion of Carl Rogers' theory. Carl Rogers referred to this type of acceptance that we need as unconditional positive regard, meaning we need people in our lives who accept us for exactly who we are. No matter our faults, no matter our challenges, no matter our setbacks, if we have individuals in our life, friends, family, partners who say, I accept you no matter what, and you are not going to lose me, that is going to allow us to become what he called a fully functioning person. So another part of Carl Rogers' theory focuses on this idea of our self-concept. And you can think about it by writing down a list of terms that you would use to describe yourself. Who am I? And then make another list of who I want to be. And if those two lists are different, he says that we have experienced incongruence. Our ideal self and our perceived self are not in line. But once we find congruence, once our ideal self and perceived self are the same, if who I am and who I want to be are the exact same list, then we have achieved becoming a fully functioning person, which is the word that Rogers used to describe this idea of self-actualization. And so if we have other people in our environment giving us unconditional positive regard, saying, I accept you for exactly who you are, it becomes easier for us to say, I accept myself exactly as I am. And so now my ideal self and perceived self are aligned. Now I have congruence and now I'm a fully functioning person. However, if other people in our lives give us conditions of worth, I will only like you if you change this or do this, well then our perceived self and ideal self have a smaller chance of becoming aligned and we are going to have incongruence and we're not going to be able to achieve becoming that fully functioning person. So the idea is that with the right environment, we can become 
these self-actualized, fully functioning individuals. Both Rogers and Maslow had the same idea, that we have the freedom and the ability to become what we would like to become and to become our ultimate selves. Really, the only difference was the path that would take us there. Maslow focused on a step-by-step -step process of meeting each need, and Rogers focused more on the interpersonal environment and how other people regard us. Thanks for watching, and always remember, be kind to your mind.